You know what? I am thoroughly surprised that this movie was not bad. Not bad at all. So yeah, let's uh let's start this review of this new film that I'm talking about. Let's start that review right now. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel today for another movie review. So today we're reviewing the film The Dry, which is going to be coming in theaters and on demand May 21st. So, yeah, look, I wanted to check out this film. I thought the premise looked really interesting, but I was a little bit worried because the film is about two hours. And anytime a film is about two hours, it's the idea of if I'm going to get bored or just lose interest, whatever it may be. But nonetheless, this film wasn't bad at all. I I, I like the, as a complete body of work, I thought the film was really good. Um, it lacked in no elements. The story is the only thing that probably could have used a little bit more oomph. Because like even in the beginning scene, um, and which I'll explain in a second, but it's, it's, it's obviously a murder has taken place, and it's really gory and graphic, and I'm thinking this film is about to go one way. Like It even felt like a horror film for the first five minutes. It really smoothed out to just be a mystery. Um, crime and mystery with drama at that. I wouldn't go as far as saying a murder mystery as a total as a, like a, as a bunch of because like a murder mystery usually has that really psychological aspect to it. But this one wasn't. This was one of the ones where you were just trying to figure out, put all the pieces together and figure out who did this. So, but nonetheless, um, this film uh, stars Eric Bana, who I have not seen since that King Arthur movie. I was really disappointed by. And uh, Gene uh, Genevieve O'Reilly, who has been in so many popular franchises, Star Wars, The Matrix, all that good stuff, who uh, also blessed her presence with this in this film and did a fantastic job. And I thought Eric um, Eric did a good job as well too. Um, I will I will I will definitely say that he's back on the redeeming himself side of things. I thought he did a good job in really showing concern, distress, and all different sorts of little random emotions that he had to go through because. He plays this character, Aaron Falk, who returns back to his hometown to attend this tragic funeral. But when he comes back, everybody's not so welcoming of him because he's actually involved, was involved or at least sus suspected to be involved with uh, this case of this unsolved death of this teenage girl. The teenage girl that he hung around with, that he was friends with, it was never solved. So now, look, you have to think about this. It's like, oh, he just coincidentally is around after another tragic uh, murder happened and then that one's never been solved so like everybody's you know are trying to figure out all these two things linked is it him and as you the viewer you're thinking like wait is it him like did he have anything to do with this and like or not who did this because there's a lot of suspicious characters and really abstract personalities in this small town um with that being said that the way how this film is working is that you don't know anything about him as a child so you're you're seeing him as he sort of has like uh, um, deja vu in going back into these places where he hung out as a child. And he's getting these flashbacks about moments of him uh, hanging out here with his friends, with the, the girl that interest. And ultimately, the, the moment where he realized that, you know, where he saw that she was murdered. So he's like going back down memory lane and really dealing with some PTSD from that at the same time, too. He was just here to check out the funeral, but everybody was like, oh, you, you better leave town soon. Like, they're not happy about him being there, but it's his hometown, and he decides that he's going to take some personal leave from work, and he's going to try to figure out what happened to this family that was murdered. And I guess that's a, a sense of try, trying to, like, make peace with the town, make inner peace with himself. And also, too, I think there's still a lot of mystery with him and wondering, like, you know how does he feel about the, the the unsolved death of his friend? And again, we don't know if he's involved or not. That's what you have to wait and see uh, in this film. I will say this too. I was like this close from being really upset with this film because they almost never address the unsolved death of this teenage girl. Like while both of these storylines are kind of happening at the same time, because you, again, you're, you're seeing the lead up into her being uh murder and, you know, who did it, who's involved, and how it all played out. And then at the same time, you got him simultaneously investigating this family that was murdered. They addressed the family, and then it's just like, 
I know this movie's not about the end without them addressing the girl, but they did at the like the very, very last moment. So I will say, like, I'm a little underwhelmed with the with the ending because it kind of was just like, here's how that happened, the end. And it's like, maybe maybe that is best for it. I mean, the film was already two hours, and I definitely think it could have been a little bit shorter. But like I think I would have wanted a little bit more contest with uh the the unsolved death of the teenage girl. Uh, but I will say, for what it's worth, both of the storylines are pretty interesting. Uh, and they they both could have still used this a little bit more oomph. But I definitely was very invested as to, like, yo, who did this? Is it connected? Yo, is Aaron at fault with this? And, like, you know, who's not telling the truth about things? There's a lot of little things going on with it. Um, but nonetheless, as a complete body of work, I thought the film really excelled and everything. Cinematography was really beautiful. Um, at acting performances were really solid um, and, even, and even the score that really complimented and heightened some of the uh, intense moments I thought did a good job so I, again I was surprised because I thought the film was just going to be but like it, it exceeded my expectations definitely if I was giving this a grade like a high B plus uh, because I just think that it, it really did not lack in anything that makes a good movie it did what it needed to do uh, it just went a little bit longer than I would like. And um, for the story itself, wasn't super predictable. But it was not like it's not something you didn't see before. It wasn't no huge twist or no huge like plot dropping moment or anything. It just played out and it was like, okay, that's how that happened. So I do appreciate that because that feels like a little bit more authentic uh, than it just being like a saw ending where it's just like, Oh, there's a big riddle involved with this, and somebody else comes out of nowhere and takes off their mask, and they're like I did it. It wasn't anything like that. So if you're looking, that's why I said like it's not, I wouldn't consider it like a murder mystery because anytime you say a murder mystery, that's when you're looking for those really big psychological plot twists and really uh, deep think tank uh, uh, ideas and complex plots and whatnot. Like this one's not like that at all. This one's just uh, a film dealing with crime with drama within the town, and just the mystery of, you know, who committed these murders, and are they connected, so, anyway, this is The Dry, it's going to be in theaters and on demand May 21st, star Eric Banner, who has redeemed himself for me as of right now, uh, definitely jump in the comments, let me know uh, if you're checking out this film, your thoughts about this film, once you check it out, and stay tuned, folks, because we got more reviews coming very soon, so thank you for watching, I'll see you around.